This is the Blackmagic Pixis 12K. It has the incredible RGBW sensor design from the Ursa Cine lineup inside for industry leading dynamic range and high resolutions at high frame rates, while being exactly the same modular form factor as the Pixis 6K. If you are after the maximum image quality possible and you work in a small team or by yourself, this is pretty much the camera to beat right now. The reason for this is, of course, the sensor. This is the same full frame 12K RGBW sensor, which is inside the fantastic Ursa Cine 12K LF. So that's dynamic range that is up there with the Alexa Mini LF, Red V Raptor, and actually better than the Sony Venice 2 and Burano, according to Cine D's independent tests. Excellent color reproduction, all recorded in 12-bit Blackmagic RAW, which is incredibly easy to work with inside Resolve. And because it uses this new RGBW technology, you can work with 12K, 8K, or 4K, all in 12-bit RAW, and all without changing your framing or cropping into that sensor at all. This sensor design is pretty much the only one out there that can do this while filming in RAW. It's very impressive stuff, and it is very useful. Because of course the main criticism of this camera is that you might not want 12K. And you know, that's completely fair enough. So if that is the case for you, just treat this as an 8K camera, or even a 4K camera, and you're still gonna benefit from all those other benefits of this sensor. And actually, still get a more detailed image than many other 8K or 4K cameras. So not only can you scale back the resolution like that, but because Blackmagic RAW has so much control over the compression which it uses, you have a lot of control over how big your files are going to be. And that's the big message I want to get across with this camera. I know that 12K badge on the front can be scary, but with this camera, you actually don't need to be scared of file sizes. And yes, you can make them huge if you want the absolute best image quality possible. But that's not what most people are going to be doing. Here's our data rate chart. Blackmagic quote their data rate chart in megabytes a second rather than megabits, which is what most of the rest of the industry use. So we've made this to convert it and help keep things clear and easy to compare with other cameras. So let's break this down a bit. Constant bitrate is a fixed constant data rate, while constant quality is gonna scale that data rate up or down depending on what's happening in your scene and how much detail is in your subject. Similar to the way that long op recording works, but in 12-bit raw, I mean, it's very clever stuff. So as you can see, if you lock the 12K DCI to the maximum bit rate, you're gonna get a fixed 8,000 megabits a second which is undeniably huge. That's gonna get you only eight and a half minutes of recording on a 512 gigabyte card. No one is really using that though. If you need 12K, then 12 to one is going to be enough for most situations. And although that's still big, it is much more manageable at 2008 megabits a second or 34 minutes on a 512 gigabyte card. That's 12K though. Most people will be using this camera in 8K or 4K. 
and 8K 8 to 1 is 1,344 or 51 minutes, while 4K 5 to 1 is a very reasonable 545 megabits a second. That's what most cameras all I codecs are. So it's very similar to what people are going to be used to working with, and it's going to give you just over two hours on a 512 gigabyte card. And remember, it's still 4K 12 bit raw. Let's compare this to some of the other recent cameras for perspective. Here it is side by side with the Nikon ZR, Canon C50, Sony Burano, and the regular Pixis 6K. This is why no one would be using the 12K 3 to 1 mode, even up at the very high end of the industry. The files are just massive. But once you go down to a higher compression in 12K, or you drop down to 8K or 4K, which is where most work is probably going to be done with the camera, everything is much more in line with the rest of the industry. It's a lot less scary, it's a lot more manageable. And surprisingly, the 4K out of the Pixis 12K is actually just as detailed as the Pixis 6K is in 6K, but of course with much smaller file sizes, which just shows you how good the scaling is on this RGBW sensor. One surprising new feature which we noticed here is that you now seem to be able to use both USB-C ports for connecting monitors. On the Pixis 6K, the front one is a viewfinder port and the back one is only for storage and accessories. And that means you can't use the Pixis monitor and the Ursa Cine viewfinder at the same time. But here, despite Blackmagic's website and even their retail box saying that that is still the case, that seems to have changed. You can plug the viewfinder into one and the monitor into the other, get full picture on both, full camera control functionality, and even use the SDI port at the same time. That is very, very welcome. Okay, let's chat about how this compares to the Ursa Cine LF. Two very different sized cameras, but the exact same sensor inside. So the differences between them are naturally going to be a big part of the conversation around the Pixis 12K. Firstly, although it is the exact same sensor, the processing behind that sensor is different in order to keep the heat down and get everything into this smaller Pixis body design. Now the only real impact of this is the sensor readout speed. The dynamic range is the same, noise performance is the same, color performance is the same, it's just a slower readout. So that means on paper, it has double the amount of rolling shutter, and it means it has half the amount of frame rates. Now that sounds awful, until you remember just how good the Ursa Cine is. So double the readout speed of this isn't a bad camera at all. Blackmagic is still one of the few manufacturers who publish all of their readout speeds in every format mode. So we know that 8K and 4K here on the Pixis 12K are 11.6 milliseconds which although it is double what the Ursa Cine can do, is still very good for a modern camera. Go up to 12K and this does get slower. DCI is 19.4 milliseconds, which is, I would say, just on the edge of being a normal amount of rolling shutter. And then 12K open gate is a bit slower again. That's 24 milliseconds. So now you're starting to get to the territory where you need to keep it in mind when working. But it is still very usable, and it's actually slightly less than the Pixis 6K in its 6K open gate mode, despite being twice the resolution. Rather than obsessing about numbers though, here's how this looks in real life as Liam rides his e-bike at a consistent speed past this building. 8K on the left, and 12K on the right. The other impact of this slower readout speed is the frame rates it can do in each mode. In 12K DCI, the Ursa Cine can do 100 frames a second, while the Pixis 12K can do 50. And in 8K and 4K DCI, that's 180 on the Ursa Cine, 180 and 90 on the Pixis. So that's half the frame rates. And again, you'd be forgiven for hearing half and thinking that that was awful news. But it's really not. Even half the frame rates of the Ursa Cine is still incredibly competitive in today's camera landscape. Getting 90 frames a second in 8K is pretty incredible, really. Then there's the physical differences, of course. I mean, the Ursa Cine is a much larger camera designed for use by a crew. It has a second screen, much more ports. It has the B-mount batteries, the media module for eight terabytes of incredibly fast storage, and of course, those built-in ND filters. Don't get any of that here. 
So really choosing between these two cameras is going to come down to, can you cope with the extra size of the Ursa Cine? If you're on the kind of production that can, it is better in every single way. But if you're an owner operator and keeping lightweight is important to you, then the Pixis 12K is gonna get you that image quality in a much more nimble form factor. Now, comparing the Pixis 12K to the Pixis 6K is much less clean cut. From the outside, they look identical, apart from the 12K logo on the front, of course. Same dimensions, so the same rigs will work, the same ports, the same media slots, and so on. The only difference with all of that area, like I mentioned before, is that on the 12K, both USB-C ports are gonna work for monitors. So you can connect both the viewfinder and the Pixis monitor, and that is gonna be a big deal for some customers. So there's a lot that's similar here, but the big difference is of course the sensors inside, a 6K CMOS sensor versus the 12K RGBW one. We're planning a dedicated video to look at and show the image quality differences between the two, hopefully soon. But the most obvious ones you're gonna see are detail and dynamic range. The 12K is significantly better in both areas. And perhaps counterintuitively, the 12K might actually give you smaller files using the whole sensor. Because of course it can do 12K, 8K and 4K in camera scaling. So you can use 4K RAW with the full sensor, no cropping. So despite the 12K badge on the front, the 12K might actually be easier for you to work with in terms of file sizes when you need it to be than the Pixis 6K is. That is not what most customers would expect coming into this. There's also a big difference in terms of frame rates. The Pixis 6K can go up to 48 frames a second in 6K DCI, while the Pixis 12K is about the same while in 12K as it can do 50p in DCI. But again, because of that scaling, it can use the full sensor and do 8K or 4K DCI at 90 frames a second, which is a big difference. The only way you can get that high on the Pixis 6K is to go down to a 1080p super 16 millimeter crop, which gets you to 120p. But there are still a few areas where the Pixis 6K does win out. Low light is probably the biggest one. Not that it's anything particularly amazing in low light compared to what else is on the market, but that is kind of the real limitation of this 12K sensor. The other one is price, of course. Both are very reasonable cameras, but the 6K is almost half the price of the 12K. So, who is the Pixis 12K for? That's the really interesting question here. To me, this is the camera that most reminds me of Blackmagic's original goal. You know, they've always said right from the beginning that their aim has been to make the best sensor in a box to capture the best images possible to use inside Resolve and then to make that technology accessible for everyone. I'd argue that this is the camera that has achieved that the best since that original 2.5K cinema camera way back in 2012. This is a camera which you buy to get access to this sensor. Because it's one of the best sensors on the market, dynamic range that rivals the best cameras out there at any budget, one of the most detailed images out there, fantastic color reproduction, and decent high frame rates to boot. You know, different people have different priorities in a camera. If you want a run and gun tool, which can be super flexible and work in all kinds of different situations, that is not this camera. This camera is for when you want to trade that for image quality. If you're in control of your subject, this is one of the best choices out there right now, especially at this kind of price. If you want to order one for your own work, head over to ProEV, and if you have any questions at all on the Pixis 12K, leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.